Shalom. First and foremost, all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shai Bahasham, or Chahakwadash. Double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone who still rule well, who still teach well, who taught me this 100% truth according to the Holy Spirit. And peace and blessings to the elect of the nation of Israel scattered throughout the four corners of the planet Earth, pushing this word in humility and sincerity as commanded by Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shai Bahasham, or Chahakwadash. All right, and uh, the title of this lesson is going to be um, Manifest Destiny. All right, and uh, there's two sides to the coin of Manifest Destiny. Now, Manifest Destiny, it says here, Manifest Destiny, a phrase coined in 1845, is the idea that the United States is destined by God. It advocates believed. Its advocates believed. To expand its dominion and spread democracy and capitalism across the entire North American continent. So Manifest Destiny is basically the idea or the belief that the Most High God uh, set up America to don't have dominion over the planet Earth. And this is pretty much, you know, basically true. You know, the Lord did have a divine plan for America to uh, dominate the earth and America being the Edomites okay when I speak on America I'm speaking on the Edomites okay because this was the blessing that the Edomites were blessed with all right it, it was divine all right that they took over the world this had to happen but there's a, 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 a another side to the coin there's another side to manifest destiny and that's the manifest destiny of the nation of Israel, okay? But let me touch on the manifest destiny of America real quick. Let's go to Genesis. And the apostle uh, Ramlob did a lesson. Um, I forget the title of the lesson, but he basically touched on this this uh, phrase, manifest destiny. And uh, I wanted to do a lamb back, you know, but basically touching on the manifest destiny of the nation of Israel, you know? How it's, it's, it's going to be a manifest destiny when the elect of the nation of Israel are set up on the, over the whole planet Earth and have dominion over the Earth. Because um, another definition of manifest destiny, it says, uh, let, me go, let me go back. Because uh, another, uh, another definition says manifest destiny. Manifest destiny. It says in the 19th century doctrine or belief that the expansion of the U.S. throughout the American continents was both justified and inevitable. OK, so it was inevitable. The, the, the conquering of the American North American continent was inevitable. Why? Because it was prophecy. So Genesis, let's go to Genesis 27 and verse 38. We'll start at. It says, And Esau said unto his father, Has thou but one blessing, my father? Bless me, even me also, O my father. And Esau lifted up his voice and wept. And Isaac his father answered and said unto him, Behold, thy dwelling shall be the fatness of the earth and of the dew of heaven from above. For by thy sword shalt thou live and shalt serve thy brother. So Esau was destined, was inevitable, to live by the sword, live by military power. And he was going to dominate through that power. It says, for by thy sword shalt thou live and shall serve thy brother Jacob. And it shall come to pass when thou shalt have the dominion that thou shalt break his yoke from off thy neck. So Esau has broken that yoke from off of his neck. Okay. And that yoke was on his neck under the time of King David. Uh... And it also was under uh, uh, during the dark ages, and when he broke that yoke, he 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 had the dominion. It says, and Esau hated Jacob because of the blessing wherewith his father blessed him, and said in his heart, the days of mourning for my father are at hand. Then will I slay my brother Jacob. And Esau was given the blessing to dominate the earth. Okay, he was given that. So that he could fulfill his, his manifest destiny. But that doesn't negate the fact that Israel has a manifest destiny as well. Because it's all according to these prophecies. 
Revelation 6 and 4, and there went out another horse that was red. Now, this horse that was red is Esau Edom. Okay? And power was given unto him. Power meaning dominion. Let me go to that word power. Strong's G, 1325. Didomy. Didomy. Where power is didomy. It says uh, to bestow a gift, to give something to someone. A reward, to pay wages, to appoint to an office. Uh, to grant, to permit one. So Esau was granted permission by the Heavenly Father to give one to someone to care for his interests. So power was given unto Esau. A, a permission was given unto Esau. A grant. It says to have power. So power was given unto him to set us uh, like it. Let's read it again. Revelation 6 and 4. And there went out another horse that was red, and power was given unto him that sat thereon to take peace from the earth. You see? And how did he acquire America? By taking peace from the earth. Let's go to Habakkuk chapter 2 and 12. It says, Woe to him that established, it's like it, woe to him that buildeth a town with blood, establishes a city by iniquity. You see, because he wasn't justified in some of the acts that he did. He was justified in taking his land. I'm on my 15, what's up? Okay, copy. Hab it's like it. Habakkuk 2 and 12. Woe to him that built of a town with blood. So Esau got this town, which a town is only as big as the citizens, is America. This town was established with blood. Micah 2 and 2. And they covered fields and take them by violence. You see, it was prophecy. We're reading it right here. It was prophecy that manifest destiny would take place. That's why it was inevitable. Okay. Micah 2 and 2. And Esau knew his blessing. He knew that eventually he was going to get the power over the earth. He was going to get the dew of heaven from above. Would be as the dew of heaven from above. Micah 2 and 2. And they covet fields and take them by violence and houses and take them away. So they oppress a man and his house, even a man and his heritage. This is what had to happen because it was prophecy. It was manifest destiny for Esau. Revelation 6 and 4, and there went out another horse that was red, and power was given unto him that sat thereon to take peace from the earth. That horse that was red is Esau, Edom, the Edomites. Reading on, and that they should kill one another, and there was given unto him a great sword. You see? A great sword. Okay? And so, the manifest destiny, the Lord said that he created everything in twos. Right? Sirach, chapter 33, verse 15. So look upon all the works of the Most High, and there are two and two, one against another. You see, all the works of the Most High are two and two, one against another. So what does this mean? This means that if there's a manifest destiny for the wicked, there's a manifest destiny for the righteous. Okay? There's, there's, a, there's a prophecy in here for the righteous to dominate. And have dominion over the earth. Daniel 2 verse 44. And in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed. This is a manifest destiny for the nation of Yasha Allah. And the kingdom shall not be left to other people. Why? Because it's going to be given to the Israelites. But it shall break in pieces, dominate, okay, conquer. But it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms and it shall stand forever. You see? So the Lord has a manifest destiny for his elect. Uh, Daniel 7 and 18. But the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever, even forever and ever. You see? So the saints of the Most High, all right, which are the Israelites, they're going to take the kingdom and they're going to possess the kingdom forever and ever. Endeavor and ever. All right. And this is the manifest destiny 
of the nation of Israel. Another manifest destiny. Revelation 13 and 9. If any man have an ear, let him hear. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. You see? So it's, a desti it's destined that the Edomites are going into slavery. It's destined that the so-called Caucasian race is going to go into slavery for the enslavement of the so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. That's a manifest destiny. Okay, it's inevitable that the Lord's people are going to rule the planet Earth because, after all, the world was made for our sakes. Second Ezra 7 and 11. Because for their sakes I made the world. See, the world was made for the Israelites. Second Ezra 7 and 11. Because for their sakes I made the world. And when Adam transgressed my statutes, then was decreed that now is done. You see? So all of this was inevitable. That's why when you go up, I mean, when you continue reading, it says, verse 12, Then were the entrances of this world made narrow, full of sorrow and travail. They are but few and poor, and it's like they are but few and evil, full of perils and very painful. Speaking on this life. After death was decreed in Adam, these words were decreed in, in the creation. For the entrance of the elder world were wide and sure and brought immortal fruit. If they, if then they live, labor not to enter these straight and vain things, they can never receive those things that are laid up for them. You see, so this, it was inevitable. We had to enter into these straight, meaning difficult, these, this, this position of difficulty that we're in in this life, in these vain, this vain life that we're in. We had to experience this so that we can receive those things that were laid up for us, which is the kingdom of heaven. 16 says, why hast thou not considered in thy mind this thing that is to come rather than that which is present? You see, so Esau is not considering that this kingdom is going to be taken from him. Okay, and in the end, in the end, the, the, the elect of the nation of Israel will be set up on the planet Earth. In the end, you know, the, 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 uh, the just shall uh, have the domain. In the end, it will be given to the Israelites, the, the kingdom of heaven. So like it, man. People keep fucking calling me. All right, but um, so in the end, it's gonna, the kingdom is gonna be given to Israel, man. You know, and that's and that's the, the 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 destiny of the planet Earth. Micah four and thirteen. Arise and thresh, O daughter of Zion, for I will make thine horn iron, and I will make thy hooves brass, and thou shalt beat in pieces many people, and I will consecrate their gain unto the Lord, and their substance to the Lord of the whole earth. So this is the this is the destiny for the nation of Israel. You know? It goes back to the blessing that the Lord put upon us. Deuteronomy 28, verse 2, and all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy power. And we will, because the Lord's gonna give us new bodies, and he's gonna make us perfect. We will never sin again. Verse 3: Blessed shalt thou be in a city, and blessed shalt thou be in a field. Blessed shall be the fruit of thy body and the fruit of thy ground. And the fruit of thy cattle, the increase of thy kind, and the flocks of thine sheep. You see, and the thing about these words that we're reading, these words have to come to pass. Okay? See, everything that the Lord said, he knew was going to come to pass. The, the good and the bad. But just because just the bad came to pass first don't mean the good won't come. The good's going to come too. You know, it says, blessed shall be the fruit of thy body, meaning our children. And blessed shall be the fruit of thy ground, the fruit of thy cattle, and the increase of thy kind. And the flocks of thy sheep. So, hey, this, this is when the Lord sets us up over all the nations on upon the planet Earth. You know, and we shall be called blessed of, the, of Yahweh. You know, the sons of Yahweh, the sons of the living power. Isaiah 61 and 4. And they shall build the old, old waste, and they shall raise up the former desolations, and they shall repair the waste cities. And the desolation of many generations. And strangers shall stand and feed your flock. So it's going to be a manifest destiny that we're going to have slaves. Okay? We're going to have servants out working in our fields, feeding our animals. And the sons of the alien shall be your plowmen and your vine dressers. And ye shall be named the priests of the Lord. When men, it's like a men shall call you the ministers of our power. 
you shall eat the riches of the Gentiles. See, we're going to uh, dominate and, uh, and, uh, and uh, inherit all the resources of these nations. That's, that's the nation of Israel's destiny. It says, ye shall eat the riches of the Gentiles, and in your glory shall, and in their glory shall ye boast yourselves. You see? Let me get one more. Second Ezra 8. And verse 52. For unto you is paradise open. You see? Unto us paradise is open. This is our destiny. For unto you is paradise open. The tree of life is planted. The time to come is prepared. Plentiness is made ready. You see? Because it's our destiny. It's the elect of the nation of Israel's destiny to inherit the whole planet earth. And it will be made manifest. Plentiness is made ready. A city is built and rest is allowed. Yeah. Perfect goodness and wisdom. The root of evil is sealed up from you. Weakness and the moth is hid from you and corruption is fled into hell to be forgotten. Sorrows are past and in the end it showed the treasure of immortality. You see, in the end, in the end, treasure of immortality will be showed. That's that's the manifest destiny for the nation of Israel. So Lord, we'll just edify on just something quick through the spirit. I want to give all praise on and glory to Yahweh Bahashem. Yahweh Shai Bahashem. Or ha ha, what I should give me the spirit to do this lesson. Brother Yaquan, call me Ashraullah. Shalom.